Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and video number 7 of our MATLAB series which is going to discuss the topics of formatting and type conversion. So as you might have seen in the last video, I was already announcing that we will have a look at the data types uh, MATLAB offers us and how you can convert existing data types to other data types and vice versa. I will also show you how you can format your output inside of the MATLAB environment. That means if you only see, let's say, four digits, we can make it that way that we will, let's say if we deal with finance, that we only see two digits after the comma or dot in this case. And I will show you how you can do that and set your preferences inside of the MATLAB environment. Um, but without talking too much, I want to show you how it's done and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back to the MATLAB environment. So I've created a, an M file right here and we are going to quickly discuss what data types we have inside of MATLAB and what formatting means. So as I might have seen in the last videos, we already covered the basic data types already. So let's say if you have a variable called A, which is 10, and we would execute this by with a five and type in whose in the command window, we would see that the class of the variable we have defined is class double. We have other possibilities on other data types that we can use. For instance, we have my name, which would be Yusuf, and if we would execute this and then go with whose, it would say, hey, this is of type string. We have also characters. Let's say we use another variable that is um, university name, and then just call it kt. That would be of type char, and we can quickly check this by typing whose in the command window, and here you can see it has a size of six bytes and is class char, which stands for character. In the last video, we also have seen that we have type boolean. So if we have a variable that we call, let's say, is dangerous and call that true, that would be a boolean value. And if we type whose again, we can see that this is dangerous variable is of class logical. The same goes with false. So false is also of type logical. So these are the basic data types we have inside of MATLAB. If you want to know about more data types that in, exist in, inside of MATLAB, uh, I would recommend that you check out the documentation because otherwise the video would be very long. You can type in in Google or in the documentation directly, MATLAB data types, and then you would find a bunch of information regarding data types. And let's say if you go to numeric types, how you can convert them, uh, what what types exist, let's say signed integer arrays, unsigned integer arrays, etc. how you can cast variables to different data types and stuff like that. I will show you a quick example how you can do that. So if we say we have a section two, say we're variable or let's just use pi for the sake of demonstration. And we want to say, um, we want to convert this pi into a string. So if we print out pi, we get this value of 3.141, 592, etc. But if we want to have it as a string now, we say, okay, let's just call the variable pi string, whatever, and then say numerical value to string. This is a function and requires an input argument. And we would now print this out. It would give us this number as a text. If we t now type in whose, we would say that this pi string is of type character. We can also use other functions that exist. Let's say we want, we have an integer, and want to convert it into a string, then we just give it an input argument as well, let's say 5.8. If we execute this now, you can see that it is a six. Let's just assign it to a variable name, execute it again, and we see that the temp1 variable is of type char with a size of two bytes. We can also convert string to double. So you see there's a lot of possibilities that you have inside of MATLAB. Let's just create a second variable here with the name temp2 and let's say we want a string and convert it to a double and this should be, we we'll give it a string or character right now. Uh, let's say it should be 3.14 and this should be a double and it converts into a double with four decimal places after the delimiter or separator here, in this case the dot. Now talking about formatting create a new section which will cover formatting right now and about formatting 
So we have just seen that we see four decimal places after the delimiter. Now it might be useful that we see more precision of the digits after your delimiter and that can be set or adapted by the command format and then the type of the formatting and the standard type format is t format short so if we type in format that would give us the standard format if I type in pi now you can see that this is three point and then four digits after the comma let's just clear the command window if I now type in let's say format long we get like 14 to 15 decimal places after the comma so if I now type in pi you see I get plenty of digits after my delimiter now if you want to get back to format short which is the default setting we can just type in format and it would be back to normal as you can see it might also be useful let's say if you work with fractions that you have a format which we call format red for rational and if we now work with uh, let's say fractions one half plus two third plus three quarter that would be you see it converted into a fraction if you now go back to the format and do this whole operation again you see it gives us this number right here not the fraction sometimes it might be very helpful to get the fraction and you can see that you can play around with the formats and make the MATLAB environment do what you actually want it to do I'm just writing formats that we have used right here in our script so we used format goes back to default which is four digits after the comma then we used format long format short is the, st the standard value so let's put it right here format short we also used format red for the rational example I showed you then another example would be format compact to uh, neglect the white spaces in the output another format would also be the opposite of format compact would be format loose and uh, one thing I want to show you is format bank let's say you work with financial values and we will do a nice little project at the end of the series which will go into more detail on how you can calculate your own budget so we will create a small budget planner and for that format bank might be very useful so if I go to format bank and now let's say I want to call the value pi you see only two digits are shown after the delimiter and in financial situations only two digits after the comma are relevant and if you want to go back of course we can type in format and then we are back to normal now one very important thing to note here and which I will put in, a, in another section is one might think that the change of the formatting might affect the precision of your calculation which is not the case. I will put this inside the script so that you are aware that this is not the case. So changing the formatting does not affect the precision precision of your calculations. And we'll put this not here with capital letters. So make sure to keep that in mind. So it doesn't really matter if you're working with format short, long, bang, etc. We create a new section and I want, want to show you a small trick where you can use that or where I use it, let's say in my bachelor thesis. So if you have section four, uh, which talks about formatting, um, maybe file looping. And that would be cool if you, let's say, want to write plenty of files and then you have maybe um, an index or a variable that's called K and goes maybe from one to 10 or we just give it a value now to make it a little bit quicker, which is 10. And we want to say, uh, we want to have a string and call our outputs or write files that have the name, let's say uh, file and then have a separator, just underline and then write here num to string. And we want to use this K that we have defined and if we execute this, it gives us file 10. So what you can do is to use this technique and maybe if you have a loop or work with spreadsheets, you can create outputs or anything like that and create multiple files by using this 
method right here. So this can become very handy and once you have familiarized yourself with the techniques, increase your knowledge in terms of what you can do with string formatting, etc. But if you are interested in more on that topic, feel free to check out the documentation or write me a comment down under the video and I will make sure to answer it. So this was already video number seven of our MATLAB series. I hope as always that you enjoyed it. In the next video, we are going to have a look at a very, very important topic. That is MATLAB performance. How you can measure MATLAB's performance. What is the TikTok command? What is the MATLAB profiler to identify hotspots inside of your code? But we will also use this TikTok command, as I just mentioned, to create some bar plots. And with these bar plots, you can actually see the time it takes the code to execute and compare it to other bar plots next to the initial one to see how faster or slower, in the worst case, your code actually is. So make sure to stay tuned and as always, make sure to hit the like button, smash it as always, hit the notification bell and subscribe button of course and see you in the next one. Peace!